Welcome back to the worm, folks. It's winter time. If you guys have been watching my videos uh, since I moved out here full time last winter, uh, mostly what you've seen is me building pointless stuff with a chainsaw just to keep myself entertained all year long, and now it's winter again. So I thought for this video I'd kind of show you what it's like to live in a tent in Michigan for the winter. And it's there are a lot of challenges, and I guess you could call I guess you'd call them struggles to be fair, but it's beautiful. And I, it's one of these times and places I just, you know, can't imagine being anywhere else. There's no, no other place I'd choose to be. If you're one of those people that enjoys winter camping, like I do in a place with, uh, no power, no water, really no shelter other than, uh, a tarp, <laughs> uh, this will all seem routine. You'll understand what it takes. Uh, for the rest of you, this video will probably be a big, big fat head slap uh wonder why anybody would want to do this but uh enjoy my discomfort i forgot to cover and <laughs> drain the hot tub uh-oh uh-oh somebody waited a little too long yep i waited one day too long yep all right that's a problem no more running water at ringworm, which means no more showers at ringworm, which means oh, no filtered drinking water. All right, things are going to change. So this is the only water that's left out here now. some of that up and see if you can get the water out of those tanks. <sighs> what happens if we take this out? Jeez, oh Pete's. Oh, that's enough. Doesn't turn very far, but it's coming out. That's all we need. I guess I'll at least save enough water for a couple showers. Even if it freezes in the bucket, I could still get it out of there. Two more nights of being clean. Might as well take this one last opportunity to make a couple gallons of water. This thing's frozen. Just thaw it out in there a little bit. Nope. Well, this drained all night. What do you think? Oh, so satisfying. Check that out. That looks pretty cool. Only it was all that easy. That's shoveling. Woo. Living out here in the winter does have its challenges. One of which is tents. You notice this is not a winter tent. It's a tough decision which one to use almost by the night. Is I now, unlike last winter when I moved out here uh, around February, I didn't have any kind of heater which is fine. I've always camped in the winter, never need a heater, but when you do this day after day after day, you kind of get worn down being cold all the time. So you guys have seen the little propane heater that I have. I've got one in here. And the problem with those propane heaters is 
they're catalytic, so you don't uh, asphyxiate or you don't get carbon monoxide poisoning, but the byproduct of those heaters is uh, water vapor. So if you use a, a mountain tent, it's all sealed up. It also doesn't vent very well. So if you use a, a heater even for a half an hour in there, everything in there just gets damp. And then, you know, obviously if it's 33 degrees out, it's not a problem because you'll still slowly, you know, things will will dry out. As soon as it gets to 32 or below, uh, none of that stuff goes away. So every bit of water vapor you get in the tent is uh, is there to stay. Unless you can find some way to dry it out. And clearly, I don't have any place to dry anything out. When the weather gets really bad and it's snowing and blowing hard, you don't want to be in a summer tent. At least not in a Michigan snowstorm. You leave home for three days, you come back, you got all this cleaning to do. Should we check on my uh, water supply here? Apparently water expands. That's my dish water. There we go. That's plenty of water to clean things up real nice. Clean that pan, clean it. Oh boy. A few days I was gone working on the four-wheeler. I also got out my sewing machine and made a, had a bunch of scraps. So I made a nice little snow mat for inside my tent. And a cover for the chainsaw sharpener. You can't do without the sharpener. I don't even have a measurement, but put some nails in there and I don't know, that'll do. Try as I might, I forgot to leave my coffee cup open last night, so the lid won't come off. To dump some hot water in, well, there you go. Everything freezes. Looks like there was some coffee in that. Why is that so gross? Huh. Oh well. Kept one gallon of water in my tent last night. And it only got down to the teens, so... I warmed it up a little bit before I went to sleep. Kept it right by my... Right up against my sleeping bags. Being that it's only a tarp, can't let all this stuff sit on along the bottom here and just cave in the side of it when the weight gets to be too much. This is only supposed to be up for the summer, just as a place to get out of the rain, so I didn't bother making a good pitch to the roof. But it is a nice place to park the four wheeler keep it kind of out of the snow. Safety fourth, like I always say. It's a lot of work to move these around but it's a whole lot of more work to take them out of here and get them filled. So that one's got a few gallons left in it. I showered every single day for the better part of a year with that thing. Heated up five or six gallons of water every time to 100 to 105 degrees. So propane lasted a long time, but I'm gonna burn it up in here. It's pretty empty, but I bet it still weighs 100 pounds. This is when you need Tito around. Where did that guy go anyway? morning and evening heat now for a little while not a lot in there check that out something I've never seen before all the minerals sunk to the bottom I don't know if I guess when it froze 
This is the uh, water I filtered from the runoff right near here. I think it was like video number six or something like that when I made the water tower and carved a channel to collect water. And get it out of there in buckets and then uh, dump it through a filter, but it doesn't take all the minerals out. That is weird. It's been about 30 minutes. Last night, just thawing out one gallon of water, making it back to liquid. I got an extra cooler here, so after I got it all thawed out, a couple of them, I'll just keep them in here. I'll keep an extra day that way without freezing. Once every day or two, I'll, you know, heat up another gallon and stick it in there. Sucks having to melt a gallon of water every single day. It takes a long time and a lot of fuel. That's not coconut in my morning granola. That's the milk starting to freeze. So you got a couple options. Either get an Nalgene of water, get it nice and hot, and throw it in the other cooler where my food is. It's just starting to freeze a little bit. Uh, or throw a hand warmer in there, which is what I'll probably do. I got a hand warmer in the bottom of my sleeping bag. Because the foot always ends up wet, you know, when you wake up in the morning because it's touching the edge of the tent or something. So you can throw a hand warmer in there and throughout four or five six hours the heat will just kind of come out and evaporate a lot of that ice and water but it wasn't too wet this morning so i'll probably grab the hand warmer out of there <laughs> from where my feet were last night and put it in with my food and by the end of the day most of that stuff will be thawed back out frozen bacon mm -hmm. you gotta get your calories from somewhere toothpaste is frozen <sighs> It's not a surprise, usually I get up in the morning, put my jacket on, throw it in there and let it thaw for a few. <laughs> it works. This might look miserable to you living like this, but I think it's a blast. <laughs> it's got its challenges, but, you know, either do this or <clears throat> go get an apartment or a house and I'd be bored out of my friggin' mind. See? No problem. And besides, living like this is so simple. You get cold, you just grab a tool and do a little bit of work, you warm up. Never get overweight. You can eat whatever you want. I eat, generally eat Granola, the highest calorie granola I can find with nuts in it, berries, like raisins, heavy whipping cream dumped over top of it, and a handful of bacon that I've pre-cooked. That's breakfast, and I haven't, gained a pound, <laughs> I haven't gained a pound in a year. It's not a complicated life. It's not even really that difficult, but you just can't sit back and let everything happen for you because it doesn't work like that. You sit back for one day things get a little bit they go a little bit sideways things start freezing your clothes freeze don't keep you warm it's got to keep moving all the time look at that i'm warm burned off a little bacon and the door opens and then my sleeping bag was still pretty crunchy so i don't take the hand warmer out of it i'm just gonna heat this water up throw it in the cooler and within a couple hours my salad shouldn't be crispy anymore. Made these uh, noodles for dinner last night. Put them in here uh, hot. That uh, heat helps keep things from freezing too but That'll keep it good for probably two days. It'll keep stuff from freezing. No problem. Just takes a little patience and a couple of BTUs. Or is it calories? Can't remember. I'll think about it. I don't usually run the wood stove in there, but Everything's so covered in ice, I think it needs to be thawed out a bit. This is a cedar forest and is great for building. It's light, it uh, mills well, uh, but it's horrible firewood, so 
it's an issue uh, trying to use any kind of fire, wood burning stove or anything to heat anything, especially something like this that's not insulated. It doesn't even have walls, it's just tarp. I spent way too much time, not too much time, I spent exactly the right amount of time playing around all spring, summer, fall, building fun stuff. Didn't split a lot of firewood, which I said for the last five months, this is going to be an issue at some point. Um, I don't really need this uh, shelter. I don't hang out in there. I just use it to store tools and keep stuff out of the out of the weather. But looks like I got enough firewood to run that thing about, I don't know, five, six, eight, maybe ten days total. So uh, once every two or three weeks when the ice builds up in there, I'll fire up the wood stove, maybe spend the day in there hanging out, working on smaller projects. But for now, I got to get the, the icicles out of there. I'll, sh I'll show you what I'm looking at. This is the inside of the door. Everything in here is frozen. So I just started up the, the stove. I'll burn it for a few hours maybe. It's not really that big a deal except that, you know, all this condenses on the uh, tools and on stuff you want dry and kind of makes a mess of things. Yeah, that's wet. It's strange too, I guess most of it's coming up through the ground on days we get a little bit of greenhouse effect in here and it warms it up just above freezing and then it condenses on everything. I try not to, uh, I don't ever really cook in here because the bears are around anyway and they have a, I think they have some interest in this place so I don't do any cooking to, to attract the critters. So it's appropriate with this video where I'm uh, highlighting some of the issues of living out here. Uh, I charge all my charge my phone, which I use for some of the videos, and my GoPro from my drone batteries. Because they're uh, they charge really fast in the car whenever I go anywhere, and uh, they run in pretty cold weather. The GoPro batteries apparently don't. So I've had the fire going in here for the better part of an hour and just got this up warm enough that I could even charge a GoPro battery. So while I might be out here all year, uh, the videos might be fewer and far between uh, if I can't find an easy way to keep everything warm and charged. I don't know, that's one of the issues with uh, living like an idiot in the woods all year <laughs> and trying to make videos while you're doing it. We'll see what happens. If you keep seeing more videos, then... Uh, I figured out a way to keep this stuff going. If not, then see you in the spring. If you've been watching for a while, you'll recognize the, uh, the shower here. There's a video early on, maybe one of the first few videos that we made uh, putting this thing together. We've got a propane burner, runs off a huge tank, a 100 pound propane tank, which I just dragged out to the deer castle to keep the heater going now that it can hardly use the shower anymore. All the water I pump from a drainage over there where I dug a hole to collect water up to a, uh, a water tower, that's what I'm calling it anyway, a tank. Um, runs down a hose, comes to here, fill the pan up, turn the burner on, wait about 15 minutes, and then uh, got an infrared thermometer and get, get it to exactly the temperature you like. I prefer about 101.5 or 6 during the summer and then the winter about 104, a little bit more. But I saved myself two showers. And I'm going to use them strategically. So if I'm here and don't leave for anything for a couple of weeks, then I've got a shower and backup. I'll show you what it looks like. I can actually slip this whole block of ice right out of here and fit it in here, light it up, and good to go. I've got a monster shower. Five gallons is a great shower. I mean, granted, your bare feet are standing right here, which is a little painful for a minute, but once you dump, you have five gallons of uh, 104 degree water, you don't mind it after about 20 seconds. So I'm gonna save my remaining two showers for emergencies. So this morning when I got up, this was all soaking wet and all mushed down. But I threw a uh, hand warmer thing in there when I got up and now it's, it's got pretty good fluff to it. Also, when it gets below freezing, it's not a good idea to use a uh, memory foam pillow. It turn into a rock. Actually, it's, it's in the 20s now, so it still is flexible, but when it gets down to the teens, it's 
you you can seriously give yourself a con concussion weighing down on them. And on most days camping in the winter, can't have a shower, so have a little, you know, wet wipe bath in the tent. However, they also freeze solid. It's a pain. It really is a pain. Well, I just got a call that the uh, tractor part is fixed or actually rebuilt to make a new piece for what I broke uh, on the tractor. It was like months ago. I had it rewelded, broke again, so a guy made a new part. I had to take the four wheeler down, take the tools down to the parking area where the tractor is. And there's a laundromat on the way, so I'm going to throw my sleeping bag and a couple wet clothes in there too. I wanted to get this all a bunch of these big ruts filled in uh, by the time it snowed, but it got too muddy at the end of the fall there. So now it would actually be perfect. There's only like three or four inches of snow. I'm at least going to get out there, get the part and fix the tractor and then uh, see what kind of daylight I have left. It's only five hours till dark, so i got to get going. impossible to remember every single tool I still haven't I don't think I've done this once without coming back at least two to three times so just take everything I can think of tarp to sit on water jugs although I tell you what laundromat water does not taste as good as swamp water sleeping bag and jacket to dry out boots you name it Got my drone batteries too, so I can charge those while I drive. <sighs> Nothing else. It was nice to sit in a warm car for a couple hours. give it about a 90% chance I'm going to get stuck right here because <clears throat> I got stuck there two days ago without the trailer full of gravel. I only put a couple half scoops in just to try this out so we'll see what happens. Oh, made it. On the suggestion of uh, one of the people in the comments I filled this all with limbs and tree branches and small poles and stuff but it's still some of the ruts are too deep so I have to fill my way down to the really bad ruts the real problem is going to be getting the trailer out of here now took three trailer loads just to get out to the spot that I wanted to fix it's here I'm starting to bottom out the four-wheeler, and when it's icy, I can't get around it. You just get locked in the in the ruts. Maybe take an extra hour and a half after dark. My headlamp. Hopefully, I brought my headlamp. Oh, oh feels so good. Fill those in. <laughs> an extra full load, and really got it stuck. Didn't have to winch it out, but. The back and forth it was a little bit too much weight to have those tractor or the uh, trailer tire tires in uh, fresh fresh snow like that. Well, that's enough for tonight. Well, I stuck it out as late as I could last night. And I'm glad I did because it snowed quite a bit, and those are considerably better. I mean, I didn't have enough gravel to fill them all the way up to the top, but holy cow, that is drivable. Let's see how much persuading it takes to get this chunk of ice out of here. Wow, look at the end of that thing. 
I was way too full. Does this look like a shower to you? There's a shower. Wow, check that out. All the impurities in the water, just like that water jug I had, all the impurities sunk to the bottom. That is so bizarre. And it's not frozen. I guess that would lower the the uh, freezing point of the water. That is crazy. Well, I guess I can get rid of that schmutz in there. Not that it probably matters. So bizarre. Also found it's worth getting the snow off of here so that either your feet don't stick to it or actually found they do have some flip-flops here so it's really slick if you get that snow full of water and it freezes while you're standing out with your bare feet you gotta have a place to set your clothes gotta have a place to put your watch I'm just curious what this looks like as it's melting. This is what I do all day. I get curious about something and I go check it out. That's pretty weird, right? <laughs> wow, look at that. Holy cow, that's already 50 minutes. Five zero. And there's still ice. And the other reason you don't want to take a lot of showers out here is a towel is only a single-use thing. Well, sometimes two uses if you don't get it too wet. It never dries out. You hang it there, you got to make sure you hang it just right, too, because you can get it totally frozen around something. Now I see why it's taken so long to get up to temp. I didn't even notice this. There's the tooth of a Sam Squatch. Does it every time. 93. Got about five minutes. Yeah. Oh. I feel so freaking good. <laughs> as soon as you get that first bucket of water over your head and the steam starts rolling off, it is glorious. You stay warm for like a half an hour when you get done with this. Well, hopefully that gives you some idea what it's like to uh, live in a tent out in the woods all winter. Looked fun during the summer, didn't it? <laughs> you wouldn't want to do it now? I bet not. Well, unfortunately, I got a little bit of a warm snap coming in right now, and all this beautiful snow is gonna melt, which means it turns everything to mud. And the reason I left a week ago for a couple days was to work on the four-wheeler and power wash all the mud off of it and get it dried out. Is after an entire year of it building up on there, uh, the thing wouldn't move. It freezes in place. The brakes, all the brake cables and everything are just frozen mud, so I gotta get some stuff out of here from the summer that I don't need anymore. It's just taking up space. So I gotta take off for a couple days, haul stuff out of here before it's mud. I wouldn't be able to get it out of here in uh, probably in another eight or ten hours it's gonna all start going so it's kind of unfortunate and also throughout the winter if I did stay here a hundred percent of the time you guys would never see a single video because my batteries don't work anymore in the cold for my computer uh, so I can't edit anything not to mention there's not really a good place to warm place to sit and take your gloves off and work on the computer so if I can uh, figure out a way to keep the even the uh, camera batteries from freezing, I'll keep putting out videos. We'll see what happens. If you guys, if you guys have any ideas, I mean, other than keeping the batteries in your pocket, that's hard when you take a hundred clips over the course of an hour to keep taking the camera down, putting it away, especially when you can't even do that with gloves on. Uh, are there any tips and tricks of how to keep the camera working when it's really cold? Let me know. I'd love to hear it. And hey, I said it before, but I love hearing your guys' comments uh, in the evening when it's dark. And I got four hours before I go to sleep. Uh, I sit with my one bar of cell service and read your comments and try to respond to all of them. So keep them coming. That's my entertainment. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll see you on the next one.